Hi, welcome to Denta Vacation Discussion Forum. This is a great place to ask questions and participate in conversations related to dental work. Your questions and comments help us decide on future topics. Hi, Dr. Komal. Hi. Dr. Komal, do you think uh, smokers should have dental implants? Uh, see, as we all know, smoking is very harmful for our health. Not only our lungs and our immunity, but also our oral health is affected. And this part of our health has been underestimated for the longest time. So let's start by discussing what implants are. Uh, it's basically a screw-like object which is made of titanium. Now titanium, uh, you might wonder, it's, it's a metal. Why are we placing it in the body? Well, it's biocompatible. What that means is that it's uh, compatible with your tissues. Uh, it doesn't cause an allergic reaction. It doesn't cause any harm to your tissues. That's why it's used in the bone. Uh, so there are two appointments. The first appointment is where the implant is actually placed in the bone. Um, then there is a gap of about three to six months. And in the second appointment, your abutment and crown are placed on top of the implant. When you smoke, uh, the sheer heat of the uh, smoke that you inhale scalds your tissues. Now, what that does is it causes uh, overproduction of the top layer of your skin. Now, this term is called hyperkeratinization. So, smokers are barbecuing their skin in yes, a slow manner. Yes, yes so they it's are. A slow barbecue of their skin. We can say that. Now, for a normal person, uh, plaque accumulation happens, but it's not at the rate at such a high rate as in smokers. Smokers tend to have a lot of plaque and calculus in their mouth. Now this essentially means that they have bacterial colonies and these bacteria can enter your gums, they can enter your bone and they can cause diseases. This will lead to loosening up of the gums and the seal that the gums provide around your uh, teeth and your implants will be lost. Okay, so uh, smoking and uh, smokers uh, oral health seems uh, is not a conducive environment for dental implants. Absolutely not. Also, nicotine uh, causes vasoconstriction. What this means is that it uh, decreases the, the diameter of the vessels and the capillaries that are carrying your blood to the gums and the bone. Um, now, blood has nutrients, it has oxygen. Uh, these things are very essential for the normal functioning of our gums and the bone. So. Uh, my understanding is when we breathe in, our lungs are the organ that exchanges oxygen with the blood and that's how it gets around the body. That's right. How do, uh, you know, the gums and the mouth area get impacted by that? See, uh, when we inhale oxygen, when we inhale air, we take in the oxygen to our lungs, but that doesn't mean that the lungs are the only tissues that get that oxygen. It, it exchanges uh, places, it enters the blood and then it flows to all parts of our body. Oxygen, therefore, essentially it's going everywhere. Another thing is that uh, nicotine harms your salivary glands. Saliva is an antibacterial. You might not know this. Saliva contains lysozyme, which uh, functions uh, as a um, you know enzyme which kills bacteria. So that's all the more essential for a smoker. If you are smoking and your bacterial activity is already high and also there's more plaque accumulation in a smoker's mouth. So uh, it's all the more essential for you that you maintain your uh, saliva. Wow, that reminds me of this uh, National Geographic uh, <laughs> videos where we see animals, wounded animals yeah, licking yeah. on their Exactly, wound. exactly. That's, this is the very reason why they do that. It, it's antibacterial. Also, it flushes out all the debris in your mouth, uh, the places you can't reach manually. Um, your saliva helps to flush out those areas. So, for a smoker, this is very important. Is there a relationship between grinding your teeth at night with smoking? Yes, there is. Uh, this condition is known as bruxism. Now, bruxers, uh, due to their uh, inhalation of nicotine, uh, their perioral muscles are in a constant state of excitement. Uh, so this uh, leads to grinding of teeth against each other. And this for your implant, it's actually very harmful. It can cause a lot of instability 
and uh, this will lead to uh, ultimately it will lead to failure seems uh, even nicotine patches and uh, you know oral uh, consumption of uh, tobacco and other uh, nicotine products are not conducive for dental implants and your oral health yes you're right uh, nicotine patches or you know tobacco that you chew all these are actually providing you nicotine in other forms or in a lesser amount but they're actually doing essentially the same thing mm. uh, nicotine inside your uh, blood it uh, it causes vasoconstriction when you are consuming nicotine another uh, by product is carbon monoxide carbon monoxide has a 200 times more affinity for ox- for uh, blood than oxygen does is carbon monoxide correct me if i'm wrong the same uh, gas that uh, causes so many deaths during fires and uh, you even know heard of uh, people suffocating in their cars because carbon monoxide from the engine leaked into the car yes like yes that. that's actually a good point uh, carbon monoxide poisoning is is an actual thing uh, carbon monoxide because of its affinity for hemoglobin in the blood it's very poisonous and it can kill you in a matter of seconds seems uh, that uh, smokers m- must have a very high dental implant failure rate compared to non smokers yes they do and there is a huge difference uh, in smokers the failure rate is about 16% whereas that in non smokers is just about 1.4% wow that's yes. almost uh, what more than 10 times yes it is it's a huge difference which is why it is stressed upon so much that you need to be very honest you need to uh, open up to your dentist you need to tell them everything about your habit so what can smokers do seems they are not left with much choice i mean if i were a smoker uh i would not be a good candidate for dental implant so what can i do uh, are there any other options like uh, dentures should i are there better alternatives uh, to denture uh, to dental implants uh see first of all the first and foremost thing is that you will have to quit smoking at least for some time before and after your procedure and uh, as far as dentures are concerned uh, dentures actually uh, have a lot of advantages and disadvantages but since you are a smoker and your oral conditions is already very compromised um any kind of prosthesis would be a, would be a challenge so oh, is that yes uh, dentures actually tend to decrease the amount of bone in your uh, in your mouth and uh, whereas implants on the other hand they increase the amount of bone formation it's just that uh, you need to make lifestyle changes or or quit smoking to accommodate having dental implants if if you are a smoker yes uh, lifestyle changes are very important first of all again smoking you need to quit you need you can substitute it with other things like e-cigarettes which don't contain nicotine these kinds of e-cigarettes are available in the market you can join support groups uh, you can join facebook forums and there are apps available on play stores these days which you can download and you know they can help you uh, quit smoking other than that you can meet people who are going through the same process and uh, i would like to point out also that your diet plays a very important role before and after implant procedure oh is that right yeah your diet needs to be as healthy as possible you need to consume green vegetables uh, fresh fruits lots of water keep yourself hydrated at all times and um, avoid sticky foods avoid hot spicy foods avoid caffeine also again it's a vasoconstrictor and it decreases the blood flow to your gums and your bone mm. so um, what i um, learn hearing from you is that people who smoke they should not go for dental implants unless they are willing to quit smoking yes exactly. what are your recommendation how if i'm a smoker today how can i go about getting dental implants well you need to be very very honest with your dentist you need to tell them everything there is to know about your habit about your medical condition how much you smoke how long you've been smoking everything hmm. uh you need to send your ct scans if they're far away you need to send them prior to your visit okay yeah so that you don't waste your time uh, you get there and your procedure is started so dr komal uh what we've uh, just learned from you 
seems uh, smokers should quit smoking it's not only for dental implants it's for their overall health as well and uh, what i uh, see is that if you want to get dental implants being a smoker only do it if, if you are ready to quit smoking Thank you.